that you enjoyed this series that Pastor Lewis has been uh, sharing on Sunday mornings for the last couple of weeks. Amen. So the first week he shared on, well, the whole series is the Essential Oil Series. And I am so thankful because my husband, you know, he said to me, he said, why don't you call uh, First Lady Yesenia and see if we can get some of those um, ingredients so we can make some of those oils. I said, no, you call her <laughs> so you can get the ingredients for the oil. But the first topic was the beaten oil that Pastor Lewis so eloquently shared and uh, just gave us that. And I, when I finished with that message, I was just taking notes. And finally, the, the next week, I just turned on my recording because I couldn't take notes fast enough. So, but I just prayed and I said, God, you know, I don't really want you to beat anything out of me. So um, I'm going to give it to you because he started revealing some stuff that I needed to deal with, or it was gonna, you know, I was going to go through something and I said, okay, God, I'm going to give it to you. And so I gave it to him. And even when I gave it to him, you know, there was that testing, like, like him saying, did you really give it to me? Let's really see if you gave it to me. And I, 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 I passed the test. Thank you, Jesus. Because, you know, if you don't go through the test, you're going to go through the same test over and over again till you pass it. So save some time, pass the test, get in the spirit of humility, do what God says do so you can move on to the next. Because you keep repeating the same thing over and over. It's kind of like that crazy cycle. You keep doing, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same results. So it's time to get off the crazy cycle. And then the oil of unity. He brought the church into a place of where we can love one another more and appreciate one another more and celebrate why Christ made us his body. Amen. And so he's the head and we take our orders from him. And then Danny, last week, she did a phenomenal job on the oil of joy. Uh, it was just amazing how she just brought out how we, for the joy that is set before us. And so it's about going through and knowing as you go through at the end, you know that the prize is waiting for you. And I don't know about you, but I like prizes. I don't always like waiting till the end to get them and having to be in suspense about opening up a package because you really don't know what's in it. Kind of like Forrest Gump and those, those of you that are younger, much younger, you probably don't know who Forrest Gump is, but his life is like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you get until you open it up. No, that's not true because God told us what's in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this week I have the privilege of sharing with you on the oil of anointing. Somebody say that, oil of anointing. And the scripture that I'm going to share is in Acts 10:38. That's our foundational scripture this morning. And it reads, you know of Jesus. And this is the NASB. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Amen. For God was with him. To further explain what the scripture is saying, Jesus declared at the launch of his ministry, and we can see it in Luke 4, 18, where it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Jesus Christ fulfilled Old Testament prophecy as the anointed one. He was the chosen one to fulfill that prophecy. He proved his anointing through the miracles he performed and the life he sacrificed as savior of the world. Through his sacrifice, thank God, and we can all thank God, we receive an anointing from the Holy One. According to 1 John 2, 20, it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specifically gifted, and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us. He illuminates our minds and guards us from error. That's in the message translation. And if I could think back in my own personal experience, when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, 
or I can say anointed with the Holy Spirit like Jesus was, my life changed drastically. And I'm sure that you can say the same thing. Can anybody do that? Can, can I get a witness here? When you receive the Holy Spirit, and I don't know about you, but I know the exact time, the moment, and the day, and like, you know, it was, it was late at night, but it was a beautiful experience. And so um, when I was baptized, it changed my life. It was like a literal person came to be with me and there was nothing I could do without him uh, making himself known. Like, this is what you should do <laughs> and this is what you shouldn't do. So there wasn't a club or a bar I could go in without him making his presence known. Without letting me know he was not, that I was not in the right place. That in that bar, in that club was not where. I was going to find what I needed to find. He would let me know that there was not a lie I could try to tell without him gently reminding me that the truth always outweighs a lie. That's just what he does. There was not an argument I could have with my husband without him persuading me to apologize or compel me to make it right or ask for forgiveness and um, sometimes, for me, that could take a miracle. But he said, these signs <laughs> shall follow them that believe. You know, in my name, we can do a lot of things, but we talk about the great and the mighty things. But how about we treat our husband right? How about we love our neighbor? That's what the Holy Spirit teaches us and empowers us to do. Um, so the oil of the spirit compelled me because this is the role of the Holy Spirit and the impact of the anointing on ones who submit to him. So if you feel like there's like this disconnect, maybe it's because you need to submit, like humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he can lift you up and bring you into the place where you need to be. How about that? The Holy Spirit is a promise of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity, the triune. In Matthew 3, 16 through 17, it says, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. So we can see the Trinity there, the father speaking from heaven, the son who the father says he is well pleased and the, and the spirit of God ascending or descending upon Jesus at his baptism. So they're all one. They work together. Uh, they have different functions, but it's kind of like an egg. They, it's the yolk, the white, and the shell. They are all one. So there's nothing that the Holy Spirit will ever tell you to do that is outside of the word of God because Jesus is the word, amen. And so I always think about these people who say, you know, God said it's okay to do this and okay to do that. And I always say, Where, what does it say in the word? And even though we have those 66 books of the Bible, which we declare to be the infallible word of God, and uh, that's something you got to settle if you continue, if you want to continue to walk in this life and be a disciple of Christ, uh, you have to be willing to stand up for the truth of the gospel and um, not add to it or take it take away from it or be afraid to say what it says or afraid to do what it says do. Amen. Because we are disciples of Christ and Christ as the head of the church has already determined what is and what isn't. Can I get another amen? The prophet Joel prophesies about this oil. He said, afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see vision. Um, listen carefully. I am sending the promise of my father, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit upon you. But you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we say, you know, the Holy Spirit, because that is a title, but he is not a thing. He is not an it. He is not an influence. He is a person who speaks, who feels, who can be grieved, who listens, who, um, you know, he's more than 
uh, someone who can find our keys. You know, I, we have this joke <laughs> in our house. You know, get the Holy Spirit to help you. He'll find your keys or, uh, you know, s- silly stuff like that. But he does help me. He does help me. He does help me all the time. Anybody a witness to that? He will if you ask him with the little things like that. He's a person. He's alive. He's alive and well. So what is his role? Um, according to John 16, 8 through 14, it says, and when he has come, he, right? will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, Jesus said, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Spirit? The purpose of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is, according to the scripture that we just read, is to be our comforter, reveal who Jesus is through the word of God, and to empower us to live for Christ and preach with boldness. The purpose of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church is to bring unity, edification, and growth through the gifts of the Spirit. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit in the world is to convict the world of sin. Now, if we take away the meaning of sin, (laughs) what is the Holy Spirit going to convict the world of? So let's stay out of it and stop trying to rewrite the Bible. How about that? Because he has already declared what is sin. Read the Bible. Amen? So it is the Holy Spirit's job to convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment, because every un a person that is not born again, who has not received Jesus Christ, they will be judged. Read the word. That's why he left us here. And that's why he filled us with his Holy Spirit. So we can go out into all the world and compel men and women to come. And as he leads us, he'll lead us to those who he is drawing. So the 120 in the upper room were the first to experience this oil. And Peter stood up and proclaimed exactly what Joel said. That this is what was proclaimed by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He was witnessing it as he was speaking it. It's amazing. I remember the day that I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was 16 years old. And I thank God for my mother. She was a single mother. She worked two and three jobs. And I was like the housemaid. I cleaned. She used to pay me, thank God. I used to get a lot of allowance. But um, I hated taking money. But, you know, (laughs) I was a teenager. But anyway, um, she worked two and three jobs. And she was a seamstress. She had six children. Six children. And she used to sew six outfits for Easter. Remember back in the day when we all dressed up for Easter? you know, with our little bonnets, and uh, she made sure we had the right shoes, the right pocketbooks, everything, the hats and everything, but she would make our clothes. She would make outfits for um, Fourth of July. Who does that? I'm like, you know, we used to dress up for Fourth of July. Anybody? Any, any, okay. Anyway, so, um, and then, you know, for Christmas, she would make outfits for Christmas. She made sure we had the right robes and all this stuff. Anybody come from that era or am I, am, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So she would do all of this, but all of the things that she did with the money that she had, there was no greater thing that she did for me than to take me to the altar so that I could receive the Holy Spirit. And she was very intentional about that. I got born again on Wednesday. She said, Friday, we're coming to church. And uh, it was only three of us, my brother, his friend, and um, my mother, who was loud and boisterous. And back then, um, I come from a denomination where we had to tarry for the Holy Ghost, which simply means to wait, because the word tarry comes when they waited in the upper room for the Holy Spirit to come, but the Holy Spirit came. And some people say, you don't have to tarry, but guess what? I thank God that he excused our ignorance, because he opened up heaven for me on that night. Hallelujah. 
And so, anyway, so what I want to say is, to the point is, that that was the most important thing that she could do for me, because I have never been the same since. I was 16. I'm not saying that I didn't fall. I'm not saying that, you know, I didn't do some crazy things. But let me tell you, I couldn't do them without the Holy Spirit speaking to me every step of the way. So I don't, that's why, you know, I don't see how people can stay in sin. You might fall, but, but, but the Holy Spirit in your life, he will love you back. He won't condemn you. He'll just show you the better way, the better way out and compel you to want to come back and get in right fellowship with God. And so I thank God for the relationship that I have with him. And even today, to this day, from 16 to 62, glory to God, he has still and he continues to speak and minister to me. He's my best friend. He's my bestie. And so I say to you that this oil, the oil of anointing, will bring you into the places that you need to be in and keep you out of the places that you don't need to be in. So this brings us to my first point, which is the Holy Spirit is the most essential of all oils. Can I get another amen? <laughs> The Holy Spirit, out of all the oils that we have heard about, and they all are significant and have great purpose, and um, the, the ministry that came forth is helping us and causing us to grow in God, and phenomenal, but the Holy Spirit is the most essential of all oils. If we look in Exodus, the 30th chapter, and the 22nd through the 25th verse, um, we can see in the Old Testament, there were five specific ingredients for the holy oil anointing, the holy anointing oil. This precious anointing oil was used to anoint kings and priests and to consecrate those things um, that were meant to be holy. And whenever someone was anointed with this oil, the Holy Spirit came upon them to do a mighty work, right? And so if I look in the New Testament and use that same pattern or typology or there are five things in the New Testament that had to be done before the oil of anointing could pour. And so in this scripture, we can see that it took the liquid myrrh. It took cinnamon, it took calamus, it took casia, and it took olive oil. So all of these made up the sacred anointing oil. Anything added to it, anything taken away from it would not make up the anointing oil that anointed the priests and the prophets for service unto God's work. Amen? And so... Here we can see that there were, in the New Testament, five essential events necessary before the oil of the anointing could be poured out. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, go and wait until you are endued with power from on high. Don't do anything. Don't cast out a devil. Don't heal the sick. Don't do anything. Stop everything. Go and wait because in order for you to move forward and do what I called you to do, you must have this oil of anointing. And so we see here that these five things, and thank God for Jesus, because these five essential events necessary before the oil of anointing could be poured out, the first one is Jesus had to come into the earth, be born into this world. He had to be born. The second thing, he had to suffer. He had to die on the cross. He had to shed his blood. He had to have the stripes laid on his back for our healing. He had to, to, to shed his blood because somebody had to pay for sin. Right? He had to descend into hell. He took the keys of death and the grave, and he stripped the enemy of all of his power. Amen? 
He had to rise from the grave. This is the fourth thing. He had to rise from the grave that distinguished from all of the others. No other so-called God or Lord rose from the grave with all power in his hand. Amen? And the last thing is that he had to ascend to the Father, take the blood that he had shed on the cross, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat of God, declaring that I have redeemed your man back to you. That was my full purpose. I finished my assignment. It's all over. Now, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit can come. The Holy Spirit can be with all of us but that holy spirit the spirit of the living god could not come so the gospel of luke records it in this way in luke 24 49 it says and i'm, I'm reading in the message it said he went on to open their understanding of the word of god showing them how to read their bibles this way and this is when he was um walking along with them along the way after he had, was had rose from the grave and he said, you can see now how it is written that the Messiah suffers, rises from the dead on the third day, and then a total life change through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations, starting from here, from Jerusalem. You're the first to hear and see it. You're the witnesses. What comes next is very important. What is that so important, that essential thing, which was so important that Jesus is pointing out right here? It is, he said, I am sending what my father promised you. So stay here in the city until he arrives, until you, you're equipped with power from on high. John 16, 7 says, however, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you into, the, into close fellowship with you. But if I go, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with with you he's most essential because we can't compare this oil of anointing to anything else nothing else he does what no other oil can do and the thing about it is he's not just someone who comforts he is the comforter he's he doesn't just tell you the truth he is the truth so when he comes, all truth, all fake, all phony, all error is exposed. And we have a decision to make. Do we choose to follow God or do we just ignore what has been exposed and we miss out on everything that he has promised for us? The oil of anointing is the most essential of all oils. This anointing is not expressed in an outward ceremony, but through sharing in the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, there was an outward smearing of oil, but in the New Testament and the age of the church, it is not an outward smearing, but an inward filling for an inward and an outward work. So at the moment of salvation, when we receive Christ, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit and joined to Christ, the anointed one. As a result, we partake of this oil and it is at our disposal to be able to fulfill the call of God upon our lives because we all know that God has given us a purpose. Thank you. <laughs> so we have this power within us, this oil, it's the bondage breaking power of God to overcome and defeat sin. This essential oil dwells within us. So you can't separate wet from water, can you? No, no you can't. So you can't separate the anointing from the power of God. So the evidence of Jesus having being anointed by the Holy Spirit and God being with him were all the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. That was 
the evidence. So when, when, um, when John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one, you know what Jesus told him? He said, tell them that the blind see, the deaf hear, and the dead are risen. So that's proof, Jesus said. You don't believe it? And I don't know why John didn't believe it, because when he saw him coming, he said who he was. Amen. But I guess when he was in prison, you know how we get when we're going through something and um, one minute we're okay, but the next minute, you know, when we get in a, a, a real tough situation, we're questioning whether or not we're saved. We're questioning whether or not we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We're questioning whether or not we heard his voice. We're questioning him, but I'm here to tell you this morning that he's real, even in the midst. And that same oil will be tested and tried in the midst of your trials. So allow the oil to pour so that you can come out with the victory. Amen. Let the oil of anointing pour so that you can come out on the other side with the victory. Amen. That's what the oil is for. It's to help us to live this righteous life. And so we can't separate wet from water. We can't separate a Christian from the oil of anointing. Because without the oil of anointing, we are nothing. There is nothing we can do without the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, don't move, don't speak, don't say anything. So that's why it is so essential for us to understand that we need him and that we have to bring ourselves to a place of sensitivity where we are just hearing him. I remember when I went through with uh, my husband and he, he, he just led me every step of the way. Well, the first thing I heard his voice say, this is your husband, marry him. Well, I, he did say that, <laughs> but he didn't say in 30 days, you know, so I didn't give God enough time to, to do what he had to do in him. You know, we just rushed the thing. We got married in 30 days. Well, lo and behold, I didn't know that he had an addiction. You know, my mother, knowing everything, she was like, you know that boy, he's on drugs. I'm like, no, ma, he's not on drugs. She said, yes, he is. I said, no, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Okay. Long story short, he was. And so, but then um, I began to say, God, I know what you said. I know your voice. And I did what you said to do. Now, now what do I do? Well, maybe I did it too quick. Maybe I didn't sit long enough to hear the rest of the instructions. Um, you know, and that's how we get, we get, we get a word and we run in with it and, um, we get out of sync and out of order because we didn't wait in his presence, but it takes waiting in his presence. And you know, my husband, when he went out, he went out, he didn't call pastor Yesenia. He went out and bought some oil. So he bought this little jar of oil that has the five sticks sticking out of it. And so in order to smell that oil, you have to put it in and turn it over. That's kind of like us. You got to put it in and wait in his presence and soak in his presence so that you can get the direction that you need for your life. So I didn't wait. But anyway, um, from that point, I began to listen because I realized that I had made a mistake, not of marrying him, but the time was off. So, but there was a day that I was standing in my kitchen. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you don't have to stay here and take it anymore. Just like that. Kid you not. To the point where I'm like, or I'd be at a, a, a party and um, the Holy Spirit would say in my ear softly, you don't belong here. And it sounds crazy, but <laughs> that's how it happens. And so when he said that, I left, went to my mother. Long story short, I ended up in Oklahoma. And I went to Bible school and, you know, um, I'm seeking the Lord on what to do. And I'm praying, God, what are you doing with him? He was still on drugs. First year is over. Um, I come back home. He, I had never seen him look so bad. It was terrible. So I went back and um, I had counseling and they were like, girl, go on with your life. You could just marry again. Just forget him. I'm talking about saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost professors and teachers 
And I'm like, but God, that's not what you're saying. I'm just coming here for some advice. But anyway, so I, long story short, God told me to wait. And I waited. And one day I got this letter in the mail. I feel like I'm in a a group session. (laughs) Forgive me. (laughs) I got this letter in the mail and um, it was him. He, He was changed. God delivered him. He set him free. He showed me how to pray for him. While others were saying divorce him, I knew what the Holy Spirit said. I took my ring off because I don't want to answer questions about where your husband is. But don't you know my finger throbbed every single day like I always had a ring on? That's how real the Holy Spirit is. So the Holy Spirit wants to be in relationship with us. And, um, you know, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I'm just going to go for it here because um, I know I'm going to be out of time because I just did this group session. But anyway, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I, um, I it, it, praise the Lord. Amen. So the second topic that I want to bring out is the oil, the anointing is the difference between toil and and oil. Amen? Amen. Between toil and oil. So Isaiah talks about how it shall come to pass in the day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen? Amen? And then in Psalms 92, it talks about how David said, Lord, give me your fresh oil. And so in David's life, if you look at the difference between David and Saul, David operated with fresh oil, but Saul did not because Saul had all kinds of things that he was, he was jealous, he was bitter, he was mean, he had all this stuff. He couldn't be the king that he was meant to be because of all these insecurities. But David was a man after God's own heart who would humble himself when God revealed himself. He didn't, he didn't hesitate to say, God, I'm sorry, Lord, help me. Amen. And so that's the relationship that we have to have with the Holy Spirit. So you can try to work for this anointing or you can walk in it. Many of us who are so gifted are still toiling with our gift and we're saying things like, God, how come this person is getting the advancement? And, or God, why is um, their child getting into college? Or, you know, it seems like favor is so far from you and you're watching everybody else advance and you're standing still. Maybe you're toiling with your gift. Instead of allowing the oil to flow, because the oil flows in a pure, from a pure heart. So you can either work for it or you can walk in it. But some of us use our gifts with ease because the oil is in our lives. So we can use an example of and I'm going to use Whitney because Whitney is from my era. And, um, but, so it's like Whitney versus C.C. Winant. C.C. Winant is a gospel singer who is anointed to sing and has ministered to so many thousands of people. Whitney tried her hardest to make her way back to God. I believe that with all of my heart. And she toiled with that thing. And so, or it could be the difference between Beyonce and Naomi Rain. Oh, so I got a better home. Okay. (laughs) So, and I'm not going to say any more about that, okay? So one is singing for the world, toiling, and the other one is singing for God and ministering, right? And you can see all the craziness around that. You can live in sin or you can receive the grace of God that gives you the power to live free from sin. So I'm thankful that we can have fresh oil because there's nothing worse than stale oil because it attracts flies. 
and Satan is Beelzebub, which is the Lord of flies. And none of us want to be associated with Satan, right? So we want to uh, make sure that our oil is fresh, that it's dipped and uh, marinated and stayed in the, the container, so which is us, and we allow the Holy Spirit, and we bask in his presence, and we wait in his presence until it's time for us to move out into the gifting that God has for us. So we can move out too soon, or we can wait until the right time. So the spirit of sabotage is around when you're at a picnic, and there's flies flying all around and you just, you know, you just want to get up and get away because the enemy is around. But if we operate in fresh oil, we don't have to worry about the flies coming. We don't have to worry about all the negativity coming. It may come, but the fresh oil gives us the power and the ability to overcome. But when you're operating with stale oil, you become just like the flies. You know, you're just, just a nuisance. <laughs> and we know what that's like, right? But the scripture says in Psalms 512, for you, O Lord, bless the righteous man, the one who is in right standing with you. You surround him with favor as with a shield. So through Jesus Christ, we receive this anointing that abides within. Say that, the anointing abides within. Say it again. So why are we anointed? With his burden, removing, yoke, destroying power of God. Why are we anointed? We are anointed to destroy the yoke of the devil, not just in someone else's life, but in your life. Because he is there giving you wisdom, understanding. The spirit of the Lord God within us gives us revelation knowledge, um, the word of wisdom, the working of miracles. All those gifts of the spirit are for you. The Holy Spirit will speak to you about you. <laughs> Not just about other people. He speaks to you about you. He spoke to me about me, not just my husband, because anytime I went to the Lord about him, he always turned it on me. Well, how about the way you did this? And how about the way you said this? And how about the way that you, you know, you were mean to him. So how you expect me to draw him when you're my only um, vessel that I'm using with him right now, but you're in the way. So the reason why some of our family members are not coming is because we're not allowing the fresh oil to flow out of us. And the answer to prayer comes as we get before the Lord and wait in his presence no matter how long we have to wait. I had to wait over seven and a half years. I feel like Sarah waiting, like, God, when is it going to happen? God. And, you know, and, and, and before I went to Oklahoma, it was always something. Either money was gone, the furniture was gone, uh, you know, he did this or he did that. And then I was like, well, you do that, I'll do this, <laughs> you know. And if you don't do this, I won't do this, you know. It was a vicious, crazy cycle, but I thank God that I'm no longer in that cycle. And God gave me the husband that I am supposed to have. I didn't go get a new one because he didn't tell me to get a new one. He said that he was going to fix the one that I had, and I waited, waited in his presence. I had to cry many of nights. I had to wonder where he was many of nights, but I waited. Hallelujah. And I can't say that I was Miss Pretty Perfect because when I went to Oklahoma, and I was in the midst of Bible scholars and Bible teachers and un quote unquote anointed people. Those were some of the worst devils you can be around. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because if it was up to them, I would be in a whole nother church, a whole nother life with a whole nother husband. But no. God said no. So are you willing? So the day that, stand to your feet. We're going to have to go. Stand to your feet. So on the day that I gave my heart to the Lord, it was like God, it was like he said, I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> but on that Friday night, he was like, are you going to, like, let's, let's make this official. <laughs> let's make this thing official. And it was like I got married to him. 
And after that Friday night, there was nothing I could do without him being a part of my life. And I'm grateful for that. I am so grateful that he is now a part of my life. Um, and there is an intimate thing, uh, a level of intimacy that is that I have with him that I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. Though I still have trials and I still got loved ones that I'm standing on the word for. But as long as he's with me, <laughs> I'll stand. Because I know victory <laughs> is in my future. And so God has plans for you. I don't know what you're going through in your relationship, in your family, in your home. But the last point I need to make, and I'm going to make it quick, is that the oil of anointing is for all of us. God is no respect of person. He will meet you right where you are. And that's what he did on that Friday night. I was messed up. I mean, I was messed up. I had gotten into some stuff. And my mother knew that if she didn't get somebody that was full of the Holy Ghost <laughs> to come and get me delivered, that I was on a road to hell. Literal. Well, we, you know, we all are, but I was, it was a living hell for me. I couldn't sleep at night. I mean, it was crazy. All because of a decision that I made. He said he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Because of what Christ did on the cross, he made it possible for us all to receive this oil of anointing. And God has plans for you, plans to prosper you. But you have to come into an intimate relationship with him. You have to be willing to say, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. Because we are supposed to be his vessels that the oil, oil pours from. And if you say you're a Christian, if you say you're a child of God, he's looking to pour his oil from you so that you can go and to the streets, into your homes, into your neighborhoods, wherever you go. And other people can feel the presence of God. I love when people say, What's, something's different about you. And I don't give myself any credit. I say, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's the oil that he put on inside of me. And for without him, I am nothing. He said, if you then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will I give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? All you have to do is ask. And I like to say, we had a class that we used to teach. He's the gift that keeps on giving. Because he's like the belly, the, 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 the river in your belly. And it flows like rivers of living water. He said, you will never thirst again. You don't ever have to go hungry again. And some of us have become cold and callous. And we have desensitized ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We used to hear his voice, but it's kind of like, you know, GPS. My sister turned me on to Waze, and it's the best thing because, you know, Waze will do things like this. Traffic officer ahead. <laughs> right? So that lets you know you got to slow down. And if you don't listen, you could get arrested. And I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get arrested, right? Well, the Holy Spirit, the oil, the anointing, he's like, uh-uh. Nope, she ain't the one. <laughs> but, oh, she's so pretty. Oh, God, you know, I can't live without her. I told you. <laughs> And then you, you, you find yourself in all this crazy, crazy, craziness. When you wouldn't have had to go through if you just had listened. But that's what he wants. You know, the scripture says it's the love of our Father God. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. He wants to commune with us. And in order to commune with him, you have to be in a place of meekness. 
where you're willing to give up your will and say, God, if I never get what I'm desiring, I'm going to serve you anyway. Lord, let me think about other people because that's what he did. You know, though it, he, he's within us for us, but he comes upon us so that we can minister to others. When is the last time the Holy Spirit came upon you and he gave you something to do for someone else and you neglected to do it? He always starts with little things like just call your sister and pray with her. You know, so-and-so needs $5, give it to her. You know, we drive by people on the street. You know, our hardness says, some people been out here every day and the same person every day. Well, something's wrong with them. It's an opportunity. (laughs) Right? So, let's ask God to touch our hearts today because there's great work to be accomplished. He said that we would do greater works when the Holy Spirit, the oil of anointing comes upon us. We would do greater works. It starts in our homes. It starts in our relationships. It moves into our neighborhood. Then it goes beyond that. So I want to say you have a great marriage. Just close your eyes. You have a great marriage. See that. Because that's what the Holy Spirit sees. You have a great marriage. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, you have provided everything we need to be able to walk in this world. And Father, there's a culture that you require of us in order for the Holy Spirit, the oil of anointing to flow through us. We know that it comes through prayer and fasting. So we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would give us a culture of prayer and fasting in our own personal lives so that when we come together, we become a part of a greater thing. But our part is not the weakest link. We bring to the table what you have provided for us individually. Father, if there's anyone in this place today that doesn't know you, I ask God that you would come into their heart right now. Show them who you are. Holy Spirit of the living God, draw them to the feet of Jesus. And Lord, every word that was spoken today, let it ring in their spirit, Father, so that they can experience you, Holy Spirit.